Hi guys, I'm Mark. I'm Penny. And we are the Oyster Boys, and today we are going to be reviewing the Chateau Belgian IPA mash kit from Brewpacks. Yes, so a bit of a, cal a collaboration between them and, and Castle Maltins. Yep. So obviously Castle Maltins, one of the oldest, um, well it is the oldest Maltin house in Belgium, one of the oldest in the world. Um, I think it's like they sell to like 147 different countries, like three and a half thousand breweries use a massive, so many different types of malt. I mean, you think of Belgium beers and ales, all the different specialty malts that they've got. These guys supply them and you can actually go to them and sort of tell them what sort of malt you're after and they'll grow it for you. And uh, the variety is amazing. So um, it's from them. So obviously you saw before it come in a, in a bucket. There's the finished product. Hang on, uh, they haven't seen it yet. Oh, I'll tell you what, why don't we just cut to a video of it coming in a bucket? There we go. <laughs> no bags. No bag. Let's... Oh. Get rid, get rid of that box. Right. Nice. It comes in a handy bucket. That's handy, isn't it? It is actually, yeah. To be fair, you can't really get enough of these because if you buy grain in bulk, storing them, I used to store my grain outside in uh, in bags in my garage. Uh, add some mice came along. Oh dear. Had a load of it, which isn't great, but yeah, comes along in this nice bucket with uh, your logo on the front there, tells you what's in it. So this is the Chateau Belgian IPA. Nice. Uh, and I'm guessing that everything's going to be inside. Yeah. So, oh god, it's a sturdy bucket. You can give it a go. Wow. <laughs> if you've got weak fingers. Okay. So, all the grain comes loose in the bucket, which you'd kind of expect. We've got and instructions, and we've got obviously the yeast. Yeah, and your bags of hops. So, 49 grams of East Kent Golding. Oh, 62 grams of Fuggles and 49 grams of Willamette. So it's looking good past that knife. Nice and easy. I mean, I like this because there's less plastic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot well, of less single use plastic. Yes, anyway, isn't I it? mean, because I can reuse that bucket, you know, obviously as much as the only plastic, I guess, is obviously with the instructions and the yeast. But yeah, I mean, you'd expect the instructions to be in some kind of bag. Otherwise, it'd just get everywhere. So let's just see what's in here. You have a look at those. So obviously, the difference on this is obviously they give us the suggested water profile. Yes, they have. Yeah. So we've we've actually already got our water uh, measured out. Uh, we use reverse osmosis water, so we've got that. We've got our additions ready to go to get as close to the water profile as we can. Yeah. Gives you quite a lot of in detail information on here, especially regarding the mash. So you've got you know get your strike water to the temperature mash for 50 minutes to this temperature, increase to 72 for another 20 minutes, then increase to 78 for two minutes. Um, and the fermentation schedule is very precise as well. Pitch at 18 degrees, keep it there for two days, raise for 20 degrees for wow. seven days, crash cool for two degrees for seven days, crash cool to minus one degrees for five days, Wow! and then rack it. And one thing I actually do really like about this, it gives you the CO2 volume. Oh, okay, in. perfect. So we like to keg. Yeah, we do like to keg, and a lot of times you just, you have to go on and find a calculator, put your style in. Yeah. This is saying carbonate's 2.7 volumes straight off the bat. Yeah, I really like that. I really so like the good. extra detail, and then obviously just the other bit is the uh, other beers they do. <laughs> all right, so whilst you're brewing, matter, yeah? whilst you're brewing, you can see oh, quite fancy that the Belgium Abbey triple. I do fancy that. Oh, Bavarian smoked beer. I might have a read of that later while yeah. we're brewing. So now, as you've seen before, <laughs> yeah, sorry. it came in a bucket. Um, seen a bit of footage of us making it. It was a really good 
way that it arrived, actually. I, I like the bucket. I, yeah, I was really I happy like with it. it. And but I love the sheet that it comes with. <laughs> I mean, well, it's got what you're expecting it to taste like. You've got your water profiles, all the information. It was really yeah. easy to follow. Different, temp different temperatures during the... Uh, fermentation, which was really interesting to do. And the CO2 volumes as well for if you're oh, taking it, that mate. was a really handy thing. Oh, uh, so good. Come out. I mean, obviously the head's dropped a bit now, but it was perfect, wasn't it? Yeah. It's great. So, uh, and I mean, the malt, uh, you know, Chateau Abbey, uh, you know, and we've not used this before. I will say something about it. Our OG was, you know, it was a lot higher. They expected 1.058. We got 1. 1.068. Yeah. And over the volume as well. Over the, yes. I think we ended up collecting... We have spoken to him about it. Yeah, yeah, so, so we emailed brew packs and just... He's playing around yeah, with it. Yeah, they said that they're, they're doing some tweaks to the efficient, you know, efficiency settings yeah. and how the packs are sold. But we ended up, it was, we were meant to get 23 litres at 1.058, and we actually collected 25 litres at 1.068. So I'm not complaining. Way over. No, I'm not no, no, not complaining. <laughs> um, obviously, you, you know, your bitterness profile and your hop additions may be a little bit out compared to what they should be, but I've not tried this yet. Penny, you've already tried it. I've you? tried it. I liked it. This is uh, going to be my first time yeah. popping my cherry on this one. <laughs> well, FG, uh, they said 1.009. We got 1.012. So we're about 7.3%. <laughs> so it's a big beer. <laughs> It's a big, big beer. beer for before That's lunch. Why we before lunch, half eleven in the morning. Pint glasses, yeah. so. and the, the and we wanted to use these yeah, new glasses. New glasses, five hundred ml. Um, uh, what I would say is, uh, it's not clear. No, it's um, you how know. it looks, but it looks like a Belgian. Be yeah. I mean, Belgium IPA. I said to you, I don't know many Belgium IPAs, and you said, well, let's think of an IPA, but using a, ye a, a Belgium yeast strain that dries the beer out. Examples, and you give me a load of examples, and I think I'd heard of one which is XX bitters. Yeah, and the, the Le Chouf do one as well, don't they? Okay, yeah, yeah, Le yeah, Chouf yeah. do a particular one, but apparently they're not very popular in Belgium. <laughs> it's more just the fact that they use that Belgium yeast strain to dry it off. But they, the research that we said was, you know, apparently this is the next up and coming trend. Well, we'll so see. Maybe we're we're ahead there. of yeah, we're ahead of the it. curve on this one. So, um, you know, from what I've it says, the perfect and enthusiastic. Uh, enthusiast who wants a hoppy IPA character with strong, complex, fruity, spicy character from a Belgium strong pale ale. Well, it's definitely a Belgium strong pale ale. Um, I mean, look, I mean, the, looks, the looks wise, heads obviously dropped a bit. Head but it was, was there great. and it, it looked great. Um, it looks murky. Yeah. Uh, we've had a couple of pints off the keg, so we've passed the bit at the bottom. It's just not a clear beer. You wouldn't expect a Belgian ale to be clear no, a, lot, a lot of no. the time. Um, I mean, some of them are, but uh, majority of the ones that I've had are not. No. Um, does it look appealing though is the thing and probably not no I, i'll be I, I, completely honest um i don't i'm not drinking it with my eyes but the first thing that you do is you see it and i'd yep. probably give that like a four nine. Oh wow really that low it's very the, the just the, the fact of the color and the, that it's not clear <laughs> it doesn't look nice okay six for me yeah i think you're being harsh <laughs> <laughs> well, well well we'll we'll see but let's dive in with our noses and see how it yes. smells uh, no, okay, you're right. Right. It's got that um, that real Belgian smell, yeah, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, it just smells, that's great, I love it. <laughs> and I, I know already from smelling it, I know how it's going to taste. And, it's the and malt, I know I'm going to like it. It's, it's, you get a bit of the malts coming through, but it's nice. Yeah. It's, it's not <laughs> biscuity. It's It smells like malt extract. That's the weird thing. Like, if you've ever made beer from a tin and you yeah. smelt the pre, but a good, pre in a malt good extract in a, in a really good way, yes. it's got that really nice smell to it yeah um, so it's got that belgian what about hop notes so you get a much hoppiness through nothing it? really on the hops no no just but the a, malt smell is great and it screams belgian it, just, it smells really good doesn't <laughs> it, it smells really good i mean i'm going to give that an eight six on the smell yeah 8.5 for me because that yeah. is a really nice smelling beer and i can't wait to try it i'd smell that if i was blindfolded and go <laughs> <laughs> i want to taste it i want to taste it so um okay should we dive in our favorite bit Cheers. Cheers, guys. You've not tasted this, have no, you? No, no, no. Oh. Very complex and in a good way. So much going on that's so mm. fruity as well, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. We have a dry afternoon, which is obviously what you get yeah. from that, that thing. Wow, um, that's... But when you say the fruitiness, I'm getting like the raisin type of yeah. date type fruitiness so I as mean, you would with a belgian beer yeah well this that sweet that kind of it's sweet and dry at the same time yeah. i have no idea how to do it well the the chateau abbey um malt 
that they used is it's supposed to bring out that sort of um, roasted fruit and bread. I mean, not getting the breadiness, but the, the roasted fruit. So your roasted dates and your raisin and that really shines through in a really yeah, good yeah, way. Yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a really nice uh, malt profile. Mm. You were saying to me before, I mean, this is Ooh, the first is. one that we'd um, we'd actually done water chemistry with, isn't it? And yeah. added, added the salts and you were saying, is it? Is it the salts that's really brought out that malt chemistry, or is it a really good beer? Well, we don't know because we've not done, uh, you know, a side by side. But um, I, I do really like that, and, and the carbonation as well. Obviously, they give us the PSI. Well, uh, they give they give this CO two volumes, and from, sorry, your, from yes. your fridge temp, you can work out what PSI you need. To yeah, that and uh, that's been really helpful for us because, like I say, we hadn't really heard of, um, you know, a, a Belgium IPA or made one, so we didn't really know where to set it at. So I think the carbonation is it's spot on, on. really, really, um, good. and it's really. You, you can tell after a couple of sips that it is over 7%, can't it's you? It's exactly what it says, isn't it, really? It's hoppy, but mm. it's not too hoppy. You know, I'm not a massive fan, but it's definitely got that bitterness hoppy from, you know, from an IPA. It's complex, 100%, fruity. It's strong. Spice, it's definitely <laughs> a Belgium strong. Maybe not quite a pale ale, I don't know. Where darker, the spectrum darker than I thought it'd be. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's um, still great, though. But it's, it's everything that, um, it's yeah, it's it's... It's almost like a mirage of a Belgian beer mixed with an English pale ale, isn't it? Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. They've got the best from both worlds. Yeah. So uh, I I'm going to give it an 8 too. Uh, higher for me, uh, I think 8.8. Yeah, 8. Wow. Two fat ladies. Storming. Yeah, I uh, really like it. I really, I, I love Belgian beers and I really, I really like that. And I can see why maybe this might be the next trendy thing because that's, Tasty. Yeah. If you want to go out and only it's have tasty. four pints, don't fall over on your way home. Then Belgian Strongs are going to be the next, <laughs> the next big thing, aren't they? Should we talk about price? Yeah, I think we need to. Uh, how much is this for a pint? Uh, for a pint, it's fifty-four p. So I mean, <laughs> the, the pack, the pack come um, as uh, twenty-five pounds. Yeah. Which I think is really good for a twenty-three liter pack, personally. And you get a free bucket. A free bucket. Um, it's strong. It's worked. It's 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 you know it's a it's a strong beer. They've worked with one of the oldest malting uh, uh, establishments yeah. you know that's that, that's around. Uh, it's a really tasty beer, and you get the bucket. I think the bucket itself is an extra two, <laughs> three, five pound value or something. I love the free bucket. Yeah, um, buckets are really handy for storing grain in as well. Anyway, I don't think it's actually big enough to ferment the batch in, which is a bit of a disappointment, but. I didn't expect a bucket in the first place, so I can't no, complain yeah, yeah, about the bucket exactly, that I didn't yeah. pay for. So, uh, yeah, um, 25 quid, I think that's really good. I'd give that an uh, 8.3. Yeah, uh, I think uh, 8.5 for me. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I think that's, that's really good. Yeah. Really good. Uh, sessionability, though, it's going to fall down for me because it's so strong. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, I'm nailing this one. I could probably have four of them. Yeah, I'd say 5.5 uh, for me. Um, and. and Maybe if it was the 6.5%, it might have got a bit higher score, but I, I just physically, I'd be blind if I had more than that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that, uh, and well, this is the first kit that we've done from these. It will definitely not be the last nope. one we've done from. I really enjoyed it. I, uh, I really enjoy the extra information that they give us on this. I think that, you know, for, for a homebrewing next level, for, for people that really want to, you know, get really involved in it as a hobby, I think um, it, it's been really good. Yeah, 100%. I definitely recommend it. Um, I'll put a link in the description down below yeah. for the kit. Uh, I'll also put a link down there for score spreadsheet for all the other beers that we've done. Yes. See how this compares to the others. And the website. Hopefully, we should have the website now. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers we just crossed. need to pull our fingers out if and not, write the content. So, uh, <laughs> if there's a website that appears underneath now, it's here. If it's just blank, we've not quite finished it. <laughs> um, what is the score for this beer, actually? Oh. There it is. Here's the score for this beer. Um, <laughs> smash like. Hit subscribe, tell your friends, do all that other stuff. But for now, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, Oysters guys. Oysters out. Oysters out.